Hi, my name is Brittany. Welcome to Spare Time at Home. Today is 30 minutes of balance yoga. Go ahead and grab your mat and let's get started. All right, so let's begin in Samastitihi Eagle Standing Pose. You're gonna stack your hips over your ankles, bring your hands together at your heart center. Okay, take a moment to close down your eyes. Bring your awareness from the crown of your head all the way down into the soles and arches of your feet. Feeling that one line of energy from crown to tail. Pressing the thumbs into the chest and the chest upward lift into the thumbs. You need to activate the side body muscles and pull the front of the belly in and up. Take three deep breaths to center yourself, to center your awareness into your physical body. Biggest breaths of the day so far. Smooth and steady in and out through the nose. Okay, one more just like that. Okay, releasing the hands down to the sides, open your eyes. You're gonna spread the fingers wide. And since this is a balanced practice, we're going to work first with our feet. So you're going to ground down through all four corners of both feet, from the big toe ball mount to the pinky toe ball mount, and the outer and inner edges of your heels. So I like to start with pressing the toes down and then activating the inner arches. From there, start to lift just all ten of your toes up. And you might even point them, known as point and flexing, right? So you're feeling that nice, nice stretch into the arches of the feet. With that, engage your legs and pull up from the pelvis. So this is our pelvis, our hip area is our center of gravity. So we'll be focusing a lot on our center of gravity today in our balance practice, as well as our feet. So let's take a moment to spread the fingers, spread the feet, spread the arches, and just feel where you might kind of feel a little bit of that imbalance and draw yourself back through that center line. Let's take one more breath here. And then exhale, set the toes down, keep the lift of the inner arches and the engagement of the legs. Good. And then from here, we're going to bring the hands back to the heart center. So we'll play a little bit with balancing on one leg. So you're going to plug the right femur, so hip bone, up into the socket. So you want to suction cup it in like so. And if you're feeling a little tight there, you can draw the heel slightly forward and then pull in and up from there. Okay. Notice if you start to dip your hips over to the left, can you draw the hips back in through neutral? Good. You might feel a little bit more work. Come into that leg. Good. Press the palms. Again, chest is lifting up towards the heart center for three. Good. You might find a little bit more here, two. And one. Set it down. Good. Other side. So again, either practice suction cupping up. If that's you're a little tight here, you can bring the foot slightly forward. Keep the activation in the feet just like we practiced in Samasti Tahi. Press the thumbs, lift the chest up for three. Good, finding that one point of focus ahead of you, that's your drishti point. So you're focusing your mind as you're aligning with your body, two. And one, good, come on down. Good, come to the top of your mat. We'll meet together in Uttanasana chair pose. Feet under the hips, you're gonna sink low, sweep till your fingertips graze the earth, and then come all the way up into the chest. Drop deep into your hips and then draw the shoulder blades back. So we're gonna really activate those upper body muscles, spread the fingers. And see from here if you can bring about 70% of the weight into the heels and then lift again all 10 toes. Good. Use a straight for the legs, a little internal spiral there for three, for two, and one. Set the toes down forward, fold over straighter legs, Uttanasana. And I'll turn this way so you can see a little bit. So you're going to take your right hand, wrap it around towards your left and your left to your right. So you're going to grab opposite shins. You can bend your knees a lot here and fold forward. And from there, if you want to add on, you can start to straighten the legs and then use that as a lever to start to dive a bit deeper into your forward fold. And we're just going to take three breaths here then staying into the feet. So you want to ground down again through those four corners of both feet. Draw your chin to your chest and pull up from your navel center. Send your breath all the way into the low back. One more full round here. Awesome. All right. Unravel. Sit back down. Right into chair pose. Ukatasana. 
This time bring the hands together in front of your heart and you're going to float the right foot one inch off the floor. Good. Notice if your hips start to move to the left, can you gather them back through center and send the roots of the sitting bones down for three. Pull the belly in for two and one foot down. Other side, you're going to pull that left foot up just about an inch off the floor. Again, notice if the hips start to dip, pull the hip in. Re-establish that connection into the pelvis. Squeeze through the upper body. Good for three, two, beautiful, and one. Set it down, forward fold. Good. This time we're gonna take our peace fingers around our big toes. So like so, you're gonna slide them in there. <laughs> and find a nice firm connection. Lift the chest, you can keep your knees bent if you prefer, especially if your low back is feeling cranky today. Take the elbows wide and fold all the way down. Now from here, you can keep the knees bent right? and just work on opening up those spaces between the vertebra of the spine. And right? if you'd like, you can start to ground down through the heels, start to straighten the legs, draw the chin to chest and your nose towards your knees for three. Breathing deep for two. Good, and one. Inhale, lift up halfway. Good, bring your hands to your hips, squeeze your elbows towards one another and come all the way up. All right, right back to chair pose, Utkatasana. You're gonna sweep, come right into it. Bring your hands to your heart center. All right, so adding on to our balance challenge, we're gonna curl the right heel in towards the sitting bone. So think of like a flamingo here. So you wanna activate the front of the quadricep. You can even pin the inner knees together if you like for three, two, and one. Smooth like molasses, step it all the way back. Good, reach your arms back. Tack the left hip in space, back in space, and draw the chest forward. Imagine you have one of those yoga blocks in between your palms, so you're activating your triceps. Good, for three. Pull the belly in for two. And one, sweep the arms forward, step forward, back to chair pose, Utkatasana. Good, hands to heart center, other side. Left heel curls in and up. Good, keep a deep bend into the right knee. And if you need to modify, you can keep the toes lightly touching down. A little bit more, squeeze it into the sitting bone. Smooth and steady, step it back. Good, chest forward, arms expand back. Imagine you have a block between your palms, you're squeezing it together. Chest is moving away from the fingertips for three, two, and one. Right back to chair pose. Good, exhale, forward fold. Good. Inhale, take a halfway lift. And exhale, step back, downward facing dog pose, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So feet are hip width distance apart, palms are shoulder width distance apart. Spread your fingers wide. You're gonna want your hands spread wide for this next balance challenge. Pressing down into all 10 finger pads. Good, pull the fronts of the legs up. Good. Now from here, we're gonna take a little bit of a shorter stance. So you can bring your toes in a little bit closer if you like. Good. And then from here, we're going to reach the right leg up and back. So we're going to keep the pelvis squared best you can. So rather than a big opening of the hip, can you reestablish that inner rotation of the right thigh and drive up through the inner ankle? Good. And you can stay here, draw the chin to the chest and look back towards your left toes. If you'd like to add on, start to walk your left fingertips back. You might stop here under the shoulder, right? You might reach back and get, grab your calf. For three, good, two, awesome, and one, come on down, full breath in, full breath out, right into the other side, left leg reaches up, you can spiral it down, lift through the inner ankle, you can stay here, or start to drag the right fingertips back, now make sure you're looking back, good, one point of focus, you can stay, or maybe play. Grabbing the ankle, maybe the calf for three. Good, <laughs> two, and one. Come on down, downward facing dog. Good, bend your knees, look forward, big deep crouch. Travel to the top of your mat, halfway lift. And exhale, forward four. Inhale, stand up all the way, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands back to heart, Samastiti. All right, standing leg raise. We're going to pull the right knee into the chest and reach both arms to the sky. 
Now keep the same activation of the foot as you did in Samastiti He. So you're flointing your toes, so you're spreading them, pointing them at the same time. Draw the knee up, pull the front of the belly in. Good. For three, two, and one. Degasana Warrior Three. Arms fly back, reach back. Good. Internally rotate the hip, so all five toes are pointing down. Lift your chest up. Now, if you want to modify, you can have a couple blocks or fingertips can come to the floor, but encourage instead of this, really work the pelvis back to neutral. It's gonna feel a little bit harder, no worries, right? It's just a challenge, working through it. You can bend the bottom knee if you like. Good, keep going, one more breath. Right back to standing leg raise. Good, and right into Samastiti. Good, other side, standing leg raise, left knee into the chest, stay strong into the standing leg. Now, if you're working on the flexibility here, you can have a slight bend, but just make sure you're engaging the front of the quadricep. Good, flex the foot, that's gonna help bring a lot of intention into the leg. Arms back, foot back, warrior three. Good, notice if the hips spiraling, can you spin all five of your toes down? Lift up through the chest like uh, cobra pose, and lift through the inner ankle for three, two and one pull it through with control back up to standing leg raise beautiful come on down samastiti all right right back to chair pose ukatasana and sit deep we're going to work into garudasana eagle pose so we'll start with the hands at the heart center right leg up and over so you want to squeeze the inner thighs together if right toes can stay on the floor you can lift them up or full wrap behind the thigh Keep the hands at heart center or reach them forward. Right elbow underneath, come into the full twist. Good, really work the squeeze of the inner arms and the inner legs. Sit deep into the hips just like chair pose and then lift your chest up just like you did in Degasana Warrior Three. Good, move everything right through the central channel of the body. Pull the front of the belly in. That's your power center for three. Good, two. And one, right into Degasana Warrior Three. Here we go. Good, adding on to the challenge, lifting the chest, maybe working towards straightening the left leg. Beautiful, half moon is ne next, left fingertips down, and then start to open the hips. So we did a lot of neutral hips, now we're stacking the pelvis. So our pelvis are in, is in two halves. We're stacking the right pelvis on top of the left. Good, reaching up. Now the bottom knee can be slightly bent. And you can also have a block under your left palm. Good. And best you can, you want to draw the toes more forward. So if you look down the center line, you can see your toes. We're taking the back bend out, really contracting and compacting through our center. For three. Breathing for two. And one. Bend the front knee. Landing warrior two. See if you can find a lot of rooting into the foundation here through the feet. So again, you want to feel the toes lifting, press through the outer part of the foot, and then soften it. Good, for three. Good. Release the shoulders, and find your breath for two. Good. And one, straighten both legs. We're going to heel toe that back foot in. Triangle pose, we're going to come into a floating version. So we're going to bring the hand to the hip. You're going to reach the left fingertips forward. So as you draw the hip out, find a little rotation here. So a little click forward. So that's going to help smooth out the sacrum and the low back. And you're going to reach here. Now you can stay or reach the top arm up and over and spin the chest up for three, two, good, and one. Right into Trikonasana. We'll take three deep embodied breaths. So the hand can be on the shin, block, maybe working it all the way to the floor if it's available to you. But again, focusing on aligning the spine from crown to tail. Looking up to the thumb best you can. Good, one more breath. Good, come back to warrior two. And reach the left arm up, capture the wrist, 
dive that front knee forward. So stack that knee over the ankle best you can, and you're gonna launch back reverse warrior. Now rest your right cheek on the inner arm and look down towards your back toes. So you're stretching that whole left seam of the body. Stay buoyant in the pelvis, one more breath. Good, cartwheel the hands down. And step back down, we're facing dog. Three breaths. Or child's pose. And come onto the knees, arms extend forward, hips back to the heels. Relax the head, neck, and shoulders. Good. Bend the knees, come into that deep crouch, look forward, step or walk, halfway lift. Exhale, folding. Inhale, chair pose, Ugatasana. Hands home to heart center, Samasti. Left leg up and over, Garudasana, Eagle Pose. You can bring the toes down, float or full wrap. Good, extend the arms out. And then the left elbow underneath. Good. And from here, start to soften the hips down. But lift your chest all the way up. So toes can stay down for balance. Good. Squeeze everything in towards the center for three, two, Focusing the mind. And one. Right into Degasana Warrior Three. Fly back. Extend back. Internally rotate the thigh. This bottom leg can stay a little bit bent. Fingertips can be on the floor on a block. But practice lifting your chest. That's going to really start to strengthen the upper back. Good. One more full breath. Extend crown from tail. Right fingertips down. Half moon. Ardha Chandrasana. Reaching the top arm up. Best you can, try to stack the left half of the pelvis on the right. Imagine, you, in fact, you have a whole wall behind you supporting you. And as you look down the center line of your body, make sure you can see all five of your left toes. Good. One more breath. Good. Bend your front knee. Good. Land softly. Warrior two. Cross the front fingertips. You notice the booty sticking out. Can you tuck the tailbone a bit? Externally rotate the thighs. Find something a little bit deeper. Good. So to straighten both legs, we're going to heel toe the back foot in. Setting up for floating triangle. Arms expand. Left hand to left hip. Flip the right palm. You're going to tilt the hip slightly forward as you reach and extend. Good, focus on stacking and lifting, smiling across the collarbones towards the ceiling. You can stay here or reach that top arm up and over. Like you have a beach ball between the palms and you keep rotating the chest up. So strong in the obliques for three, two, and one. Right palm down, right in a triangle pose. Three full breaths. So hand can be on shin block, maybe all the way to the floor. Rounding into the back foot. Good. One more breath here. Extend up to the fingertips, shoulders away from the ears. Good. Warrior two, bend the front knee. Right arm reaches up, capture the wrist, then dive the front shin forward. So just keep that nice deep bend in the knee, and then reach and launch back into reverse binded warrior. Look back to your left big toe, rest your left cheek on the inner arm. Good. Stay connected to the legs, the roots of the feet for three, two, and one. Hands down. Downward dog will meet or child's pose. Three breaths. breath equals steady mind. So not just finding the outer balance today, but cultivating that inner balance through our awareness, through where we choose to direct the mind at any given moment. Good. All right. From here, we're going to bend the knees. Something a little bit different here. Malasana squat, everybody's favorite. You're going to step to the right and to the left. Now, if you have some stuff going on in your knees, you can stay almost like a modified chair pose. So your forearms are a little Rest on tops of the thighs, but still encourage the tailbone down and slightly tucked in the chest lifting. From here, if this feels okay on the hips, the spine, and the low back, you're going to come all the way down. 
I'm going to squeeze the inner legs into the outer arms. And with that little compression, it's going to assist the lift of the chest and a drop of the tailbone. I'm going to take three breaths. Keep finding one point of focus ahead of you. Last full inhale. Stay steady and focused for the exhale. All right, hands to the earth. We're going to lift the hips. And heel toe the feet together, big toes to touch. Light on the, or grounded through the fingertips, start to get light on the heels. You're gonna lean forward, lift up. So you're on the toes, the arches are engaged, the belly is pulling in. And then from there, start to sink the hips into toe squat. Just pin the inner knees together, so this helps a ton with the balance. You want almost like you just have one leg here, like your knees and inner thighs are glued together. Blocks can come onto either side here. You can graze the fingertips to the floor. If you want a little bit more challenge, you're going to bring your hands to your heart and try to work to stack the shoulders over your hip points. Good. Just like we practice in Samas Di Tahi, you're going to work the shoulders away from the ears and that upward lift of chest to thumbs and that downward pressure of thumbs to chest. All right, working into Bakasana Crow Pose, you're gonna bring the hands down. So you want those fingers spread wide. So if you're new to crow, you might just play with this. You know, all this is just a practice, right? And so we wanna work the upper back to round. Think of cat pose in the spine and chaturanga arms. You wanna work the knees all the way up lift the arches look forward so really important rather than looking down you want to look forward in this pose you can stay here start to lean maybe float big toes touching and heels in towards the sitting bones belly strong three more breaths good come on down Forward fold, let's do a wrist release, gorilla pose. Slide the hands under the toes. You can bend the knees a lot. Try to get the toe tips to the wrist creases. Lift the chest, breathe in. And exhale, breathe out, elbows away from one another. Chin to the chest. Breathe deep along the whole spine. Soften the jaw, the face, the eyes, and the cheeks. Last two breaths. dog or child's pose you choose then we're gonna bring the big toes to touch you're gonna lift the heels reach the right leg all the way up Good. And then you're gonna bend the knee stack your hips now from here you can keep the heel lifted or bring the heel all the way down you're gonna to start to open up look under the shoulder now from here you can stay or look under your left armpit okay so make sure you got enough space there nothing Nothing in the way, no blocks, props, or peeps. Good, and then you can, if you want, you can stay here or flip right into wild thing pose. I like to extend this leg out, so right knee is bent, and then lifting up. Good. Looking towards your palm, you wanna internally rotate the shoulder, and then use the strength of the legs. Even though you're balancing on your arm, you're lifting the ribs to the sky, and you're pressing all five of your left toes down. Position back, three-legged dog, inhale, and exhale, connect the big toes. Other side, good final balance pose, reaching the right leg up, and you can stay here, or work into scorpion, and you have an option to stay here. So all this is in layers, you guys. So just meet yourself where you are, it's all good. Look under your right shoulder, make sure you have a nice clear landing pad. When you're ready, as you're ready, wild thing pose. Good, extend the right leg long. Now you're gonna lift the front of the pelvis and the ribs to the ceiling. And look back towards your left palm for three. All in the legs for two. And one. Come on down. Left leg to the sky. Breathe in. And downward dog. Breathe out. Knees down. Knees wide. Hips to heels. Child's pose. Three breaths. Breathing behind 
Opening the back of the heart space, softening around the shoulders, neck and jaw. Last couple breath cycles here. Time. We'll meet together seated and extending the legs towards the front of the mat for Paschimottanasana. Forward fold. Okay, so you can start with the knees bent a bit. You can even bring your hips up on a blanket or a towel if your low back is feeling a little bit cranky today. You're going to reach the arms up, look to the thumbs, and exhale, extend the chest forward and reach for your feet best you can. If you have a towel or strap, you can grab that. If you, today you want to grab your calves, ankles, whatever you can grab. If you're close to your feet, which can, what can help a lot is bending your knees, lift your chest up, and then think of lifting the chest forward. That's gonna give you more space, yeah. You get some more wiggle room, and you can work towards the straighter legs. Take a breath, lift up, and then exhale, come on down. Five breath cycles, Pashimok, Pashimottanasana, forward fold. Good. Pull the belly in, squeeze the front of the thighs, and draw the femur bones, the thigh bones, down toward the earth. The neck, the shoulders, the head. Good. Final breath, soften the whole back chain of the body. A bit of surrender as you dive in deeper. All right, hands under the shoulders. Chin to the chest, we'll roll up one vertebra at a time. Good, you're gonna bend the knees, and we're gonna slide forward. And reach the arms forward, and we're gonna lower down for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Setting up for bridge pose, Setu Bandhasana. Bring the heels into the sitting bones. And if you have a block, sometimes it's nice to have a block between the inner thighs because you want the legs engaged and all back and all back bends. That's like a really good rule of thumb. That way we're not compressing into the lumbar spine. What we're trying to do is open the thoracic spine, which is our mid-back, our tightest part of our spine. So feel that internal rotation of the thighs, the tailbone down, palms to the floor. You can simply be here. In fact, you're in a back bend already. You can bring a block under your hips or come all the way up. Press into the floor and then use the shoulders to start to wiggle and connect. Interlace the hands. So like two puzzle pieces coming together and you're gonna roll onto the shoulders. Now you wanna press into the floor. So in bridge pose, we're trying to bring the sternum towards the chin and the tailbone towards the heels. So we're creating space rather than compression in the spine. Drishti focuses up towards the ceiling for three. Breathing into the belly for two. Good, and one, release the arms, lift your heels, vertebra by vertebra, lower down. Nice and easy, no rush. Good, draw the knees into the chest, soles the feet towards the ceiling. Happy baby pose, you can reach up, grab the outer edges of your feet, and rock side to side a couple of times. If it's too much of the inner hips, you can simply squeeze the knees into the chest, and rock side to side. Good, just like one more a little shift, right to left. Good, knees come in. And then you're gonna lift up, try to draw the nose to the knees best you can or get close, curling yourself up into a big ball, take a big breath in. And exhale, find a release, Shavasana. Good, extend the legs as wide as the mat, arms away from the side of the body, palms up. You start to windshield wiper the feet. So in towards each other, away from one another. So you're starting to soften and relax where the femur meets the pelvis. And then just drop into it. So feet splay away. Fingers curl in nice and easy towards the inner palms. And begin to part the upper and lower teeth away from one another. Create space in the jaw. Relaxing the tongue to the base of your mouth. Eyes drop deep into their sockets. And release and relax any tension in the forehead or in the eyebrow center. Let your 
body drop into a deep state of relaxation for the next couple moments together. Welcome to stay here as long as you want or need to. If you're ready to transition out, bend the knees, place them flat to the earth. Shift right on to the right side. Just come into fetal pose for a couple of breaths. Just bring your awareness back into your body, back into the space that surrounds you. the strength of your arms, guide yourself back up. We'll meet together in Sukhasana, easy seat. Crossing the legs in a way that feels best for your hips, back and spine. Draw the hands together in front of the heart. And lifting the chest to the thumbs, slight downward pressure from thumbs to chest. Just feeling that connection, connection to the center of yourself. Take three deep breaths into your own thumbs. Each exhale, softening the shoulders away from the ears. Thank you all so much for sharing space and your practice with me today. The light in me sees and honors the same light in you. Namaste.